You don't need to buy great players when you could build great players. That's what NC State football does. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms, as always, apply. Happy Monday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone. Joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, one of the most interesting things that I saw over the weekend, in addition to four-star running back Kentrell Reinhardt committing to NC State like we talked about on Friday, that did happen. That's a massive win for the Wolfpack. But kind of along the same lines is our opening discussion. I saw a very interesting chart on Twitter posted by the College Football Report. I'll pull that up now. For those listening to us, this is an XY graph. Along the Y axis, which is going north to south, you have number of wins in the last 10 years. And then across the X, you have average rank of recruiting class of the last 10 years. You also see a couple big green dots and a couple red dots. The top left of this graph is up where you see 12 and 13 wins. And you also see the average rank of recruiting is somewhere between one and it looks to be about where 15 is. In that upper echelon, you have the teams that you might expect, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and Clemson. That green dot in the top left says elite with elite talent, meaning they pull in the best recruiting class and they have the wins to back that up. Below that, you see an elongated red dot. That one is marked with losing more with more talent. And that, you have a ton of teams. Notably, you see Texas, Tennessee, Florida, Auburn, Miami, Old Miss, South Carolina, just to name a few. And, oh, don't think I forgot them. The Dirty Foot Club, front and center, of losing more with the elite talent. We all knew this, but now you see the proof in the pudding. But of course, this is not all about them. You see a lot of premier college brands within that little dot. Further down to the right, in the bottom right, you see another red dot that says bad teams with lesser talent. In that dot, you see the likes of Vanderbilt, Kansas, Syracuse, Purdue, Illinois, Rutgers, and Colorado. Above that, you see an elongated green dot, and that says winning more with less talent. That is where you will find the NC State Wolfpack, among a couple other very impressive brands. Now, what this chart overall will tell you is exactly what we've all been preaching as NC State fans. We are getting more bang for our buck. Player development has been a staple at NC State, and this chart reflects that. Dave Dorn has pulled in some solid recruiting classes, but mostly they're littered with three and maybe sometimes four-star guys. And yet, we're still getting to the heights of eight, nine, and hopefully this year, 10-win seasons. There are not many other schools. In fact, I can see really only one that is matching that level of production, and it's Iowa. Iowa is the only team on this list that is lower than us in the average rank of recruiting class, but higher than us by about a full win in terms of average win. NC State sitting slightly below eight, Iowa sitting right at about nine. Kenton, what are your main takeaways from a chart like this one? Wow, it's so fun hitting the Dirty Foot Club. It is so fun. They make it so easy. But in all seriousness, I mean, like I've talked about for years and years on end here, you know, we cannot give Thunder enough flowers for what he does for this program. Yes. We cannot. You know, you talk about last 10 years – how many position coaches have we held on to for five or more of those years? Because I can tell you a coach that's been a constant from 2014 up through now. You know what I mean? And so uh, the reality of, of what this chart says is that, you know, NC State is doing an amazing job of winning with less talent. And the, the only other takeaway is now that we are getting better recruiting classes, oh, boy. The rest of the country better be on on alert. They better be watching out because to say that a sleeping giant may be coming awake, and I know that a lot of people say it about their school. Everybody says that their school is a sleeping giant if they're on a historical, uh, if they're on a historical powerhouse in terms of college football. But what I'm telling you right now is this graph is objectively saying that. 
And the only other team that would have a claim to that same type of territory is, again, potentially Iowa with like, hey, we can recruit. If we get recruiting better, we will it, it will not be fun with the for the rest of the country. Those guys will be crying, throwing up. You know, it, it'll it'll be rough for everybody else if we start recruiting better. But NC State has that distinguished or has the distinguished um, accomplishment of being the the highest ranking team in that uh, in that group as far as teams that are behind the 40 line in terms of average ranking class, 40 if it worse, that is at eight wins. We're the only one. Nobody else is, is you know, there except Iowa. But when you include that, again, talking about future recruiting and what we have going forward, I don't think Iowa is necessarily doing what we're doing in recruiting right now. So, you know, this is a very, very big time moment uh, for us to kind of look forward and say, man, these with what we're getting in these current classes, it's going to be scary to see what they look like with Coach Tujay, with Joker Phillips, with, you know, uh, Thunder, of course, with Coach Wiles, with Coach um, Gibson, with – with uh, with Coach and I, with these different coaches, Alexa play deads because some teams are in trouble. One of the crazy parts about this graph also is that it's projecting out the last 10 years. If you were to shrink that down to like maybe six or eight years, NC State would be further to the left, and they would also be higher up, probably closer to the nine number on this chart. Mm-hmm. The tear that we've been on in the last five to six years – We often talk about NC State being on the doorstep of breaking into that next level, that upper echelon of college football. A chart like this one signifies exactly what we're talking about. When you have the level of production that Dave Dorn and his staff have over the last 10 plus years, pulling in a lot of recruiting classes that have mainly three stars, then a couple four stars, typically at the top of that list. You have several other teams like the Michigans and the LSUs and the Washingtons and the Tennessees, whatever it may be, they're always going to sit above you in terms of the average recruiting ranking. They're always consistently in like the top 15, top 20 range. NC State hasn't quite gotten there, but the heights of the Dave Doran classes have started to reach like the low 20. This most recent class, I believe they're 27th if you go by uh, 247 rankings. I believe that ties the highest under Dave Doran. So when you look at it that way, Dave Doran hasn't had a top 25 class and yet he's rolling in eight to nine win seasons consistently over the last five to six years. If NC State were to lower that, let's say they get down to that top 25 class, or maybe even a top 20 class, you keep that same level of production and player development and building upon culture, NC State is literally that close. This is exactly what we've been talking about. It also helps to show you how important this 2024 season is. With the expectations on this team, the new roster that you've built using the transfer portal and that 27th in the country ranked class. If you are to get the 10 wins and you win an ACC championship and you get to the CFP, your average rank of recruiting, it will rocket up. I promise yeah. you it's coming. When you win on the field, you will win in the living room. Dave Dorn has been doing the inverse of that and it's been causing more wins on the field. When you take up the winning on the field just a couple more notches, you're going to continue to win those recruitments on the road, and it maybe in some places you would have never expected. First one that comes to mind, Faison Brandon, who commits in a little under a month now. Number one quarterback in the 2026 class. Can you imagine what a guy like that will do for NC State? We are literally that close to breaking through and reaching new heights in the college football landscape. You know, you talk about Kentrell Reinhardt. I listen. Anybody who knows me knows how much, of, how big of a fan of this young man I am. And I'm telling you right now, if if you think about not just him, some of the other players that are already on campus, if you think about what a year three Jonathan Taylor looks like, it's it's flatly scary. If you're looking at what Joker Phillips has already done with some very talented receivers, if you think about a year three KC. What does that look like? But but here's the deal, right? Imagine you get year three KC, year three Noah Rogers with a year two Jonathan Taylor. You see what I'm saying? Like that's that's the type of stuff you're looking at in terms of of how special um, these guys can be. And it's not just about the receivers. This is about again all of these players being developed because at NC State, player development is clearly what we do at a high level. So 
when you when you project out these guys getting better and better and better. Isaiah Moore wasn't Isaiah Moore when he stepped on campus. That's just the honest to God truth. You know, Thayer Thomas wasn't Thayer Thomas when he stepped on campus. He was some scrawny white kid who played baseball. That's who he was when he stepped on campus. And he walks away from campus as a guy that is littered all throughout the receiving record books for NC State. So when you think about all of these guys, there are very few of them that I look at and I say, oh, from day one, you knew with him. From day one, I'd probably say Peyton Wilson was was the exception to that, that we're like, literally from jump, you knew, oh, he's going to be special. He's going to be different. But other than that, everybody else took a little bit of time, took a little bit of development, put, took a little bit of, of adding something to him. Now, imagine if you get more Peytons. Not saying that he's easily replicable, but imagine you get more of that caliber of player with our player development. Whew. It's, again, it's, it's going to be a scary sight. It's going to be some slow singing and flower bringing for these other teams. On the same plane as player development and further recruiting, coming up next, we're getting into defensive and offensive players with the most to gain in the 2024 season after a quick word from our sponsors. Today's Monday sponsor is Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. This makes getting tickets even faster and easier all summer long. Prices on the Game Time app will actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. So with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and your lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Using their last-minute deals, you can save up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, you name it, they got it, and everything that you're looking for all throughout the summer. Toggling their all-in pricing feature on the app will show your total up front so you know exactly what to expect at checkout. And as always, you can get a panoramic view of your seat in the app before you buy so you know exactly what to expect upon arrival. So this summer, take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, and again, create an account and use redeem code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E, Locked On College. For $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Middle portion of our Monday show. We're now going to get into offensive players that have the most to gain in this 2024 season. Now, disclaimer here it's not the two players that we're highest on, it's not the two players that are our favorite on the team. It's the two players that we think have the most to gain, whether that's a spot in the rotation, location on the depth chart, maybe even NFL draft status. It's the players that have the most to prove of themselves in this 2024 season. So we're going to start with offense. We'll go back and forth. We'll alternate. So, Kenton, I'll let you go first on this one. Well, number one draft pick has to be the QB, baby, Grayson McCall. The reality is very simple. It's, you know, people look at last year and they don't give him the grace of, oh, there was injuries. And Tim Beck couldn't call an offense. He he couldn't offensive coordinate his way out of a paper bag. With all due respect, if Tim Beck was responsible for coordinating the offensive one on uh, D Day, we'd all be speaking German. Let's just be honest, okay? So uh, the reality is, you know, I am a big believer in this guy. But more importantly than me being a believer in this guy, Grayson McCall stands to make a ton a. And when I say a ton, I mean a ton of money. While everybody believes that NFL quarterbacks have to make these super special throws all the time, there is good money to be made in just making the correct decision on target and on time. If you think I'm lying, how much has Kirk Cousins made in his career? And you know what Kirk Cousins does? Makes the right throw on time. That's it. That's all. He's, so, you know, I, I look at him and I'm like, this is a very similar vein of guy that he could end up being somebody's second round pick or whatever the case may be. And again, he's not he has certain physical limitations in terms of he's not the biggest guy and, you know, he doesn't have a huge arm and all that. He is a guy that, again, if he can get it on time and on target, he can prove to everybody it is not the system. It's me. I'm the guy. I'm one of those ones. He stands to make a ton of NFL money this year. Something else about making NFL money, he could make a living and being a backup quarterback in the NFL. There's a, Hello, there's a market Chase for Daniels. That as well. Yes, yeah. Chase Daniel was my main example. Quarterback for Mizzou way back when, 
was in the league for at least like 10 plus years, only played a handful yeah. of games and has made more money than you could ever imagine. There's a real lane for Grayson McCall to do that very same thing or start in the league if the talent does take him there. But if he has that good of a year where he catches the attention of NFL scouts, he could be in the NFL for a long time. 10 plus years in the NFL with bigger wallets than you could ever imagine. That is on the table for Grayson McCall with the very successful season. My first player that I believe has the most to gain is probably the guy that's going to catch the majority of passes from McCall this year, Noah Rogers. Now, Noah Rogers, the prodigal son has returned. He was the top wide receiver out of North Carolina in 2022. Chose Ohio State, goes up there, has to sit behind a lot of talent, obviously, at Ohio State. Never sees the field, enters the portal, immediately comes back to NC State. And now, Noah Rogers finds himself in a situation. He's not only expected to contribute, he's going to be expected to lead this wide receiving core. Because again, the cupboards were barren after last season. It was KC, and that was it. Now, KC returns, and he's going to be an extremely integral part of this offense, but so will Noah Rogers. Feed the dog. He is a dog. He has excellent speed. He has excellent hands. He has excellent body control. He is just the ultimate playmaker. Now, he doesn't have a lot of experience at the college level, so perhaps you are asking a lot of him to be a leader as just you know a redshirt freshman, but I think that's where he does have a ton to gain. If he pops off the way that a lot of folks in the state of North Carolina saw him do in high school and believe that he would at the college level, if he brings that to the table for NC State in 2024, he has a world to gain. He will immediately jump onto every single watch list that there are for wide receivers in the country. You saw how quickly it happened with KC just last year. If Noah Rogers turns out to be the guy for this wide receiving core, at least one of the guys this season, he has a world to gain playing for the NC State Wolfpack this year. Yeah, and let's make another thing clear. It wasn't just the talent he was sitting behind. It, he was in a, a fourth-rate state and complete nutter utter hellhole called Ohio. Nobody wants to be there. It's just a terrible, <laughs> awful place to be. Glad to have you home, Noah. But in all seriousness, you know, Noah Rogers, to me, Noah Rogers being a dog would be a lanyard for this offense. Well, you know, as, for those of you who don't know, that's that's Bayou talk for a little extra. That's, that's, that's that, you know, the, the swamp talk for more than you could possibly need because I'm telling you right now, I see big things out of this offense regardless, but with Noah Rogers not just being good, being a dog, he stands to gain a lot as an individual. NC State as a team, I don't see them having a passing game outside of the top 20. That's really if we're just talking power five school or power four schools outside the top 10 to 15 nationally. Uh, based upon the idea that KC is going to continue to do KC things, and then he's going to have a guy on the outside that's just terrifying and, and you know, abusing defenses. Oh, boy, I'd love to see it. Kenton, who's your second player on offense that has the most to gain this season? He was on my list last year as a guy who had a lot to gain. He's obviously back, which means he did not quite understand the assignment. Big Belton, we love you, brother. When you're good, you're great. When you are rolling – there were games where he was flatly dominant, right? If you turn on his tape for some of these games, it, it is like he's a role grader, but he's a, this big guy with these amazing dancers' feet. He shows up and shows out at times, but then there are moments like the Clemson game where it's clear that he's getting in his head a little bit, and all of a sudden we can't block a two-man stunt on a three-man pass rush where it's like, Objectively speaking, you have a two-man advantage in terms of numbers. You need to be able to handle that. But his his technique slipped away from him a bit because he wasn't having much success in that game. So, you know, the reality that I am I'm giving for uh, Big Belt is very simple. It's very, very simple. And I'm sorry, I was referencing the Clemson game for two years ago, not last year, because that was, I believe, one of the worst performances of his career. I believe he's gotten consistently better from that. And he was better – at being consistent last year. So don't don't let me say he didn't understand the assignment mean, oh, he played terrible. No, no, he played better, but there were still those moments where it was like, mm, we got to – I think that with the position that he plays, he plays a premium position, and he has what you need. Everybody knows the NFL now is it's all about whether or not you can throw the rock around the yard. That's just the reality, okay? If you can have a guy who can protect the quarterback's blind side, really I, I think he projects a little bit more as a right tackle in the NFL – but if you could have a guy like Belton 
come in and be your starting right tackle for the next eight, six to eight years, I think you're in a really good spot. And I think he can earn that that first round grade in terms of, you know, teams potentially giving him a look as a left tackle first before they say, all right, go ahead and settle over here on the power side. Sticking on the offensive line, my second player with the most to gain is Zeke Carell. Now, Zeke Carell joining us from Notre Dame this season, his last year of eligibility, one of the top centers in the transfer portal when he chose the Wolfpack. He was a four-year player at Notre Dame. I believe he started 10 games last year before dealing with a little bit of injury. Came to NC State looking for a new opportunity, and I distinctly remember after he committed, he was talking about why he chose NC State. He had repeatedly taken notice in how NC State had developed their interior lineman. You can look as late as just last year with Dylan McMahon. Did not begin his career as a center, but finished as a center, and then gets drafted into the NFL as a center. That is the player development that we that we preach about at NC State. So now, enter Zeke Carell. He's going to be looked at as a leader of this offense, in addition to Grayson McCall. He will be the captain of the offensive line, and the offensive line is where everything will begin for this offense. Much of the season is going to hinge on how successful this offensive line is. That puts a ton yeah. of pressure on Zeke Carell. Mentioning that this is his last year of eligibility, a lot of NFL money is also on the line for him. So he has a lot to prove, being that this is his last chance to do so. Being that he's a very tough, very physical, very cerebral center, I think he brings a lot to the table for this team. I think he brings a lot to the table for specifically this offensive line. He gives me a ton of confidence in Grayson McCall as well. I think bringing Zeke Carell with the pedigree that he has and saying, okay, okay, Grayson, this is your center, that alone inspires a lot of confidence in those two with the chemistry I'm sure they've already cooked up. But like the other three options that we've talked about, there's a ton of NFL money on the line for Zeke Carell this year. And I think with that being said, he has a lot to prove of himself here in 2024. If you have any other additional names on your mind listening to this, get them down in the comment section. Tell us who you think are two offensive players that have the most to gain in 2024. And coming up next, we're switching sides and getting into the defensive players with the most to gain after a quick word from our sponsors. Last couple of minutes of our Monday show, now getting into the defensive players with the most to gain in 2024. I'll begin on this one. My first pick is Brandon Cleveland. Now, Brandon Cleveland played in the two deep last season behind CJ Clark at nose tackle, but was highly disruptive every single time he got onto the field. Three sacks, two forced fumbles, and four and a half TFLs and limited snaps is pretty freaking impressive. He just makes things happen when he's there in the lineup. Alongside of him, you're also going to have Davin Van, Red Hibbler, and Trevally Price. That's a wrecking crew. I expect Brandon Cleveland to be the crane operator with that wrecking ball. This defensive line this year is going to cause a lot of destruction, and a lot of that's going to start right up front with Brandon Cleveland. He could see a massive boost in his NFL draft stock with a very solid season this year. Well, let's keep it up front. Let's keep it with the world-class wrecking crew, ladies and gentlemen. Did you know that our leading sack guy last year was not a full-time starter? Ed Specialist, Mr. Jakevious, Red, Hibbler. I'm telling you what, quarterbacks are going to be feeling like Playboy Cardi next year because they're going to be seeing a whole lot of red. This young man is going to be all over him. He changed his numbers this year from 47 to 4, but more importantly than the number changes, I think his role changed. I believe that he has the ability to anchor down well against the run. And also the way that he gets off the ball is primed to disrupt offenses and set hard edges. It really and truly is. If this young man can show that he can be a really vital piece, three downs in this system, I am telling you right now, he is going to make himself some money on Sundays. When you think of an edge rush specialist like him, you know, the question becomes, well, what happens when you have to play in structure? What happens when you have to uh, when you have to do more than be the guy that comes in during the fun blitz packages and all that, where there's all this chaos and all that? And, you know, what happens when it's second and three or first and 10 against a run heavy team? And, you know, hey, they like to run power right here. I'm going to have to get real strong in this gap. He has the opportunity to show that he can be something truly special, not just as a pass rusher, but as an every down player. I think there's a lot for him to gain this year. My second defensive player that I think has the most to gain in 2024, 
Jihad Carter. Maybe this choice surprises you. Don't forget about Jihad Carter. He was one of the top safeties in the country back in 2020. He was a freshman All-American and an All-ACC selection in 22. Then from Syracuse, he transferred up to Ohio State, where he was one of the top safeties in the portal last year when he chose to transfer. Unfortunately for Ohio State, but maybe fortunately for NC State, did not get a chance to play a whole lot, I think in large part due to injury. Jumps in the portal again and finds his third home here in Raleigh with NC State. Now, NC State found themselves in a situation where they were desperate looking for safety depth after Devin Boykin still recovering from an ACL and Sean Brown, who was your best safety last year, is now bumping down to play linebacker. So on that front, NC State needed to go into the portal, find a safety with a ton of experience and some that they felt comfortable that could come in and start right away. Ladies and gentlemen, Jihad Carter. If Jihad Carter strings together another season like he had in either 2020 or 2022, another guy, you will see his name all over the place when it comes NFL draft time next spring. We know his aptitude for coverage. We know the level of speed that he can close a gap with and then deliver the lumber once he gets up on you. I think not only is Jihad Carter a boost to this defense, but he will be a boost to NC State as a whole. Plugging him into this defense is is a difficult act. We know what you are. We know what you can be. You got to do it again once you get here. That's a lot to ask of a guy, but I think Jihad Carter will answer the bell. And for that reason, I think he has some of the most to gain in 24. Well, you mentioned part of my answer already in terms of Sean Brown sliding down the linebacker. Well, you don't move a player who's the best at his position down to another position unless that position really needs some help. Here's why I'm saying that. The linebacking core as a whole has the most to gain from this year because mm. each and every guy up and down that roster, up up and down the roster at linebacker has something to gain. Devon Betty, he's running out of eligibility here. He's it's gonna be time for him to, you know, go to the league, go in the workforce, whatever the case may be, uh pretty soon. K Fordham, very similar, very similar situation. He's been here for quite some time. He has some time left, but at what point in time do you know it's it's as the old folks say, you either piss or get off the pot. That that becomes the moment at some point in time. Sean Brown, what does he have to gain? You gain the ability to show teams in the NFL, hey, I'm versatile. I can do all these different things. I can play all these different positions, and I can play all of them well. I'm more than just a guy who, you know, is, is such a big hitter. I can be a special teams demon. No, no, no. You can plug and play me anywhere, and the NFL loves guys with position versatility. That is a premium thing to have at the highest level. And everybody else, all of these spots are up for grabs. There is – Grayson talked about more time in the rotation being available. Hey, Mr. Groves, how you doing, buddy? Come on in. The jacuzzi's getting warm. Listen, there's there's plenty of room for every single linebacker, uh, including the, the JUCO transfer who is coming in as well, who I think he's a big-time hitter. I think he's much better going forward than backward at this point in time, but he can – Absolutely. You know, when he comes to it, he's coming with bad intentions. The reality is every single linebacker has some should have something to prove and has a ton to gain from this upcoming season. Because, again, I don't think any other position group has more snaps available than our linebacking core. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think the, the linebacking core as a whole has a lot to gain. It's a blanket statement. But it's extremely true. You're going to need somebody, probably multiple people, to step up in a major way. Peyton Wilson, unfortunately for us, is not going to be walking through that door. And you also can't replace a guy like that either. So it's going to take multiple guys, whether it's Fordham, whether it's Betty, the Juco transfer, Wyatt Wright, freshman Elijah Groves. It's going to have to be somebody steps up and carries this team in ways that maybe no one can see right now. The coaching staff more than likely does. They're going to have to unveil what feels like a brand new linebacking core come this fall so the linebacking core absolutely has a ton to gain this season if there's anyone that you feel like we really missed out on get them down in the comments any defensive players that you feel like have the most to gain be sure to get them in front of us that'll do it for us here on monday as always thank you all so much for joining us be sure to hit that like button drop your comments down in the comment box anything else you have on your mind throw that down there as well and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not already It's getting real close to college football hype video season. I'm expecting those to start coming out soon. The video game comes out later next week. It's almost football time, folks. We can start to smell it in the air, even though it's like 98 degrees some of these days. But nonetheless, we're getting real close. We'll see you all on Wednesday. And until then, go Pack. Go Pack.